College football week 10 recap brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books down there. You got the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and Fitz Casino. Go check out more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can also go over to our website, get our recap, get our picks, our previews, all that wonderful stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Chris, let's jump into it. I, I guess, I mean, it, we, we got to talk about it. Yep, that's okay. First one, so my news and notes is Bama is not invincible, but Tua plus defense equals scary. Yeah, right? they're, they're invincible. So I mean, they're completely invincible. I just I don't know. They're a man. professional football team playing with the college team, Scary. Man, the I different think... I will tell you this. The difference between LSU and everybody else is not a lot. There are teams that are better than them. There are teams that are that, that should be considered better than them. Well there are teams that can score, right? But but oh no no no. LSU can score on other teams. Just not that defensive front. Which is kind of crazy. Like it, LSU put up two hundred and seventy five rushing yards on Georgia. That's right. And Georgia's probably a top three or four defense in the country. Yes. That's the difference between Alabama and everyone else. Which is... I think if we play Clemson, we don't get shut out by Clemson. I know that's a big, nasty defensive front. I think we score on them. I, I think I you're think right. I think we play Notre Dame or Michigan. We don't get shut out by those teams. And I think our defense is good enough to hold them to very little. Now, do you think that... that I'm not saying we beat those teams. I'm saying we hang with all of those teams. Do you think the LSU thing might be a little bit psychological with no. Alabama? No, that's stupid. No, no, that, that all that's bullshit, Gary. Well, the, the only all reason of the, I all ask of the is, this is eight years straight. All of that is 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 nobody can like no none of all that's bullshit. It has no well, bearing I'm, on the outcome of the game. I'm not talking about professional. That. Players. I'm not talking about eight years in a row, all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the the game plan. No. is so weird. Right? Like, how did you feel about LSU's game plan in this game? Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Like, all the people criticizing O and all the people criticizing Menziger are are wrong. There is no offensive scheme that would have worked because you rush three and four and they blow up the offensive line immediately. There's no run play. You can't run it up the gut. You can't run it outside. You can't do quick passes. You can't do short passes. You can't do long passes. You can't do anything. There is no scheme to beat a team that can just play press coverage on every wide receiver, just man-to-man press coverage, because they know these guys aren't getting more than three to four yards before uh, 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 away before the defensive line is on the quarterback. So he has no time to throw the ball. I I guarantee you that if, if Burrow could have sat back there for four seconds, four seconds, our guys could get open at 15 and 20 yards easy against your defensive DBs. And and Jefferson got he was open. There were slots, yeah. but like some of those passes that he had to fit the ball into right. were you, I mean they, had they to were mir- they were mir- they were miracle throws. You can't live and die off of that. I don't think this is a Joe Burrow's not a good quarterback thing. I don't know that we know how good of a quarterback he can be. Because I don't think any qu- Tua if we swap quarterbacks in that game, we don't win that game. Yeah, because Tua doesn't have time to throw the ball. Because nobody can play when the offensive line just gets blowed up like they did. Yeah. It's not possible. That's not how the game is won and lost. It was it was surprising to me. Alabama came in number sixteen in the country. I believe it was sixteen, maybe it was thirteen, against the run. Right. And they had given up a lot of yards to some teams. But I, I did notice something about this Alabama defense is once they get up and it I I have figured out it is a certain number. When they get up by four touchdowns, the defense just – and it's not so much everybody else. Like, it's not the line. It's not the uh, the linebackers. It is the secondary, really. And then, like, second-team linebackers, all that kind of stuff, that, that run a little slower, all that kind of stuff. So, if you go back and look – and I, I was obviously a little eh, – maybe they're not as good as, as I thought they were – but if you go back and look, it is always in the second half when they start giving up yards, they start giving up points, and you don't want a team to be, uh, we're going to just not quit, but like uh, we're not going to play I, as hard. Yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought, man, Arkansas scored 31 on this team. We should be able to score and hang with them. And, and Alabama's not going to score 31 on us, which they didn't. And, and I thought, if we, can, if we can keep this game in the 20s, 
We can score. Yeah. We, we're going to be here. We're a better football team offensively than Arkansas. We can do this. But it, it just – it's not. It, the mentality of Alabama is drastically different playing us as opposed to playing Arkansas. Part well, of Alabama me thought was it was already still, up 21 to nothing on Arkansas. Yeah, but like, that's I think that's minutes. I think that's irrelevant. I think it's all mental. I think if Alabama wanted to keep Arkansas from like Alabama doesn't get hyped for games. They go in and it's one game at a time. One game at a time. One game. This game they got up for. They made it a point we're not going to let you score. They they made it their life's work to not let LSU score and they were able to do that. I think if they went into every game doing that, A, I don't think you're physically able, like the human body mentally is able to do that. But but you're so good, you don't have to. Yeah. Which is why you can let Arkansas score 30 and, and you score 70, and it just is what it is. When you want to clamp a team down, you have the physical ability to do that. Yes, I, uh, I do agree with that. Let's, uh, let's jump off of that. We've got a lot more topics to get to. Best game of the day, maybe in Austin. Yeah, it was. I don't. I don't know that it's best, but it's yeah, it's up there. Dana Holgerson has huge huevos. Yeah, um, no big which, big ball holders, which does set up like everything the Big Twelve tries to do. They end up screwing themselves in the process. It feels like yep. right. So they they set up a Big Twelve championship game so that they will have the thirteenth data point, and then they rearranged the schedule because Oklahoma and Oklahoma State had been playing at the end of the season for the Big 12 title for a couple of years right before the championship game. So they moved that game to the beginning of November, even though it it should be on rivalry Saturday. Uh, So they moved that up, and then they put West Virginia, Oklahoma, and now it sets up that West Virginia and Oklahoma are going to play on Friday, November 23rd, and probably play again. The Big 12 could cannibalize. We'll get back to Texas, West Virginia. I don't know that there's but a, you're not using the word cannibalize right. I, I I don't think Oklahoma winning out gets in. I think there's six teams above them that all have to lose. Oklahoma? Yes. Yes. What were they? They were seven last week, right? I don't care what they were. Their team, their schedule is just bad. The Big 12 is bad. Agreed, but what I'm saying is they they could end up not having a shot at all because if they do, if both of these teams went out until the last game. The way they played last night, I don't know that they're running the table. I don't know that they're winning in Bedlam. I don't know that they're beating West Virginia once, much less twice. We'll we'll get to we'll get to that game. Let's so so OU West Virginia. Say West Virginia wins in Morgantown, and they've only got one loss. Then they have to go to Arlington the next week to play Oklahoma. Correct. And then Oklahoma we, like beats them. So That's both right. of them have two losses. At that point, I don't think there's any shot either one of those teams. Oh, no. Up. No. No. Uh-uh. So, uh, so you almost have to beat the other team twice to be able to even Correct. have a shot at the playoff. Uh, I don't, look, but like I said, I, there's no way I'm taking a Big 12 champ. I mean, we have to have massive chaos for that to happen, right? Uh, I mean, we're, we're in the – we're in the look back right now. We're talking about preview stuff, but I think if one of them finishes with one loss, then you need a lot of chaos. I, is it is it crazy to think Washington State could lose to Washington? Well, no, no. but but is that, it crazy Washington to think State's Ohio not State getting could, in either? Like it, the Ohio State Michigan winner, like, two loss Georgia team. Georgia's only other loss is to Alabama. I think in the SEC title game, I think they get in over a Big Twelve champ. I, th- know, I just man. think they That's... do. Their only two losses are to LSU in Death Valley, massive game, and to Alabama in an SEC title game. How do you leave them out when that's their only two losses? And OU, while they look great sometimes, they barely get by. A, they got Army. a loss they, they to, Texas, Army to, to a three-loss Texas team. They, Which may they, be more, by the way. They play. They still got Iowa State left. That, that's right. And they got to play at Texas Tech. Yeah, so they, yeah, they could end up with several losses. Um, so, so you so you got that loss on your record, which is way worse than any loss Georgia would have. Yeah, and and they have no wins close to as good as what Georgia has. Um, and then you've got because with Georgia over Florida and Georgia over Kentucky right now are better than any wins Oklahoma's got and or will have unless they beat West Virginia twice. Um, yeah, you know it, it's just it's just too much to overcome. Well, let's let's talk about West Virginia. They score a touchdown with 16 seconds left to make it 42-41 Texas. And they go for two. Yep. Now, you brought up 
an interesting comment to me. Go ahead and, and talk about that because it, on TV it was, oh, this is absolutely the right call. You're on the road. Yep. You got momentum. You need to seize the yep. opportunity. So, so everyone always says, oh, you're on the road, and so you got to go for two. It's the right call. It's the right call. I agree that it is the right call. I think the logic is stupid. I think you have that same momentum and even more momentum to do it when you're at home too. To think that I can't try to win it with one play at home would be any different than one play on the road is is ridiculous. Yeah. You know? Um I think I agree with you. And, like the narrative always and, and, has and, been if and, you're on the road, you got to do that's it. That's right. That's always the narrative and I've never understood why is it wrong to, does, does that mean by saying on the road? Does that mean that it's wrong to do at home? And here's here's the caveat that I put in. It has nothing to do with home or road. If you're an offensive team, and we know the offensive teams, all right. If if you're in Alabama this year, a West Virginia this year, UCF. an Oklahoma, UCF, like these high power score all the time offenses, I think the right call is to go for two every time. Every time. If you told every one of those coaches, you got to get two yards to win the game before the game starts. One play, two yards, that's it. A hundred percent of them say, "Yeah, yeah, I'll go for that." Yeah. Or take your chances in overtime. No, I'll go for I'll go for the two yards and I'll take my chances because there aren't many teams with the defense in college football that can hold you to two yards. If you're Michigan, if you're Notre Dame, if you're LSU, I don't know that you say, "Yeah, I go for it," because because you're not one of those offensive explosive teams that can do that. You win with field position, taking the football away, making a big play. And you making the other team make a make mistake. Make a mistake. You you take your chances. Iowa State, same thing. Like, like they're probably not going to go for it. Texas Tech, no. I, I bet they go for it. Yeah. I don't know that the home or road matters. I think I agree with you. I think I agree. I think it was a good call. Oh, go. Love I the mean, call. Obviously. Love the call. Um, Holgerson, I mean, and, he. And there was no doubt I, in my mind that, I, like, I. Change, when they did time out, time out, time out, I was like, screw it. I'm, I'm flipping to another game because yep. I know the outcome. Yeah, you, you already knew they were going to score. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's see, number three, Notre Dame 31, Northwestern 21. Look, they were up 24 to 7, right? It was 7 to 7 at the half. They came out, they scored 17 points uh, between the third quarter and the very beginning of the fourth quarter. And then they turned the ball over. And then Northwestern runs right down the field and scores. They score again. It's 24 21. And then when they absolutely have to, with five minutes left in the game, they score another touchdown. So they win by ten. It looks all right, and it's on the it's a night game on the road. You know, big deal. Um, the Notre Dame defense gave up only two hundred forty nine yards, and Book looked good. I mean, he had three hundred forty three yards passing, two touchdowns, fifty six yards rushing, and one touchdown. But can they get caught? Like I just I feel like. Whoa. I feel like they of all the other yeah like, any any team can get caught of of all well, of the like of all the top five teams or five like six teams, I feel like they are the most likely to lose a game down the stretch, oh. even against this schedule. Oh, mm. I don't know about that. I mean, Michigan's got to play still in the Big at Ten, Ohio State, yes. and then still a Big Ten championship game, which they should be a heavy favorite, but it doesn't matter. Like, like that's still a big deal. Clemson's got Boston College. And then got to play a championship game to get ready. Like, like, be saying no joke now. Which, by the way, yeah. that's something else I did not put on here, but I need to. Uh, let's move off of that. Let's move off Notre Dame. Let's talk about the uh, – just real quick. But I will tell you the, this. Notre Dame's going to play Syracuse. Yeah. That's going to be weeks. a massive, massive game. Can their defense stop Dino Baber's offense? I don't know. That's going to be a fun it's game. Be so, so, Pitt – Beats Virginia on Friday night. Yep. This is not one of my notes, but I, I'm just going to toss it in super quick. Did you see my tweet Friday night after that game? No. Okay. I think this helps out UCF massively, massively. Uh, we, we'll throw. You know, I'll toss it into this note. Uh, the group of five New Year's Six bowl spot is down to Central Florida, Fresno State, and Utah State. Like SMU beat Houston 45 to 31, which was completely shocking, and then Tulane. Uh, rolled all over South Florida, forty-one to fifteen, in Tampa. Um, so you got Fresno State and Utah State that are going to play in the Mountain West Championship game, and then UCF. So as long as UCF goes undefeated, now their big Power Five win was over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is now alone at the top of the ACC Coastal. They still got some tough games to play. 
They still got Miami. They still got Virginia Tech. You know, whatever. But they are playing really well right now. If Pittsburgh can go into the ACC championship game, now obviously if they beat Clemson, that'll that's massive. Even if they lose to Clemson, so long as they don't get blown out, could the committee use that as a way to put UCF in if chaos ensues everywhere else? Oh, they should. I but, but I've been fighting this fight forever, and I know that I'm one of very few people alone on this island, and and that's okay. I'm willing to stay on this island until I'm proven wrong. I think the offensive juggernaut teams, like everyone says, well, UCF's going to get killed by Alabama. You're right. Everybody in the country has gotten killed by Alabama. So how does that tell you they don't belong? Yeah. Let's. I, I, me and you talked about this before the show. We're going through our rankings. We're going to do our top ten in a minute. <clears throat> I have them over a lot of teams, and it's because they are undefeated. All of those teams have a loss, and the. Them and all of the teams that I have them over all play the exact same style of football. Yeah. It is score, 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 play no defense, score. If you think UCF can't score with any of those big offensive teams that play no defense, you're wrong and you haven't been watching football. I think all of those teams are the exact same, and so I'm going to go with the team that's undefeated because the team, those other teams lost a game. And it's not because they lost the game because they played tougher competition. The teams that beat some of those guys aren't real good. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, we're going to have a three, four, five loss Texas team. Got to win over Oklahoma. Well, I, I think UCF could hang with both those teams, probably be favored over one of them. I don't know about favored, but Come on. I mean, it'd be Come close. It, That's fine. It'd be real That's close. fine. Make them a dog. I'll make some money. Uh, let's talk about Michigan's defense. 42 to 7 over Penn State. They are unfreaking real right now. They they held Penn that, State that to Penn 186. State offense is pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. They held, I mean, that's, they held that's, McSorley we to only 82 yards. We thought McSorley was going to be a Heisman guy early on. Yeah. 186 total yards of offense. Uh, Michigan held the ball for 38 minutes. That's a big part of what this makes is, their defense so good. This, me and you said this beforehand, Ooh. this is an old-school SEC football team. Yes, it They is. just happen to play above the Mason-Dixon line. Yeah. They play hard-nosed defense. Jim Harbaugh has brought SEC football to the Big Ten for the first time in a long time. Yeah. They yeah, gonna run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and if they throw it more than five, six times and a half, they're throwing it too damn much. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. It looks like uh, it, it, you were talking about Gus Malzahn in the uh, 2013 SEC Championship That's game. That's right. Against, where they ran it like Missouri. five times in the first half. They, and threw, he, they threw the ball like five or six times yeah. in the first half, and at halftime, the, the, whoever the announcer was or the, the reporter was, sideline girl, said, what did your takeaway? He said, we got to run the ball more. <laughs> you only threw it like five times. What do you mean you got to yeah, run no, it that's more? That's too many times. That's, that's too many times. Too many times. We didn't need to throw the ball. Ain't no sense in that. No. And uh, they didn't. And they dominated the game. Staying in the Big Ten, uh, the Big Ten is now Michigan against Ohio State. Like, that, that, that's it. Ohio State barely squeaked by I was going to say, Nebraska. let's be careful. Ohio State could get an L somewhere before Michigan. Well, the, the only thing, really, they've got they got Illinois left. But this coming week, they got Michigan State, and it's say. on the road. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, Ohio State 36, Nebraska 31. Nebraska had 450 total yards of offense. It was 5.49 yards per play. Now, that sounds like a lot. But that's actually the least amount that they've given up to a team all year <laughs> as opposed to Rutgers. Like, I, don't, right, like, I don't know what Rutgers, happened. Rutgers, they gave up uh, less than three yards a play. Everyone else has had more than 5.49 yards per play against Ohio State. That is insane to me. College football should give, like, a defensive MVP award to Baby Bosa. Okay? Yeah. Because because I've never seen one player miss a team and that team go from a pretty good defense to they can't stop anybody. Yeah. It's really – Ohio State is now lumped in with your Oklahomas and your UCFs and, and your Virginia, West Virginias as teams that really good on offense – can't, can't stop, stop nobody. a cold. I mean, just nothing. Yeah. And 450 total yards of offense is not, you know, it ain't 600, 700, but it's still. It's good. Like, I'm not I'm not knocking them. But part of the reason they, they only had that little bit was not because their offense is so. Their defense lets the other team hold the ball too long. Yeah. You can't put up 700 yards of offense if the other team just keeps the ball. Which, 
Brings me back to Michigan and Ohio State. If Michigan State beats Ohio State in East Lansing this weekend, Michigan's already got the Big Ten West wrapped up. I mean, they, they still – they got to beat Rutgers. They're going to go into the big house. They're going to make them cry. That's – I mean, I, I think so. Harbaugh's I've seen crazy things happen. a hard day. Uh, that's entirely possible. It might be a fake one. It might be a real one, but – He's going out in an ambulance. Let's uh, let's talk about Georgia 34, Kentucky 17. They steamrolled the Wildcats. Bama, Georgia 2 is set. Georgia Three. is a real good football team. 331 rushing yards on, on Kentucky, and they held Kentucky to 84 rushing yards. But you know what set this up? A punt return by McCall Hardiman. Set up Georgia with their, their first points, and... I mean that it, it's the same thing that happened with South Carolina, right? You you rely on a big play in your secondary or a big play with your special teams unit, and once you get that, once you got a lead, yeah. Kentucky Kentucky don't play well from behind. Well, I don't know about that. They played the the entire Missouri game from behind. Well, yeah, but they the, I, but the it, it took game. a it took a punt return touchdown for Kentucky to get back in it. It took no. you know, and then they didn't score until the last play of the game. That's that's fine. So, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you this. Georgia did exactly what I thought they should do. Yeah, run the football. They they handed yep. it. They handed it to the big boys and they said go. Yeah, go go go. This is one of the best run defenses in the country. We're gonna break their back. We're gonna beat them at what they're good at. Yeah, we're gonna run it right at the strength of their team. And when they realize what they do best, they can't stop us. We're better than them at what they do best. They will break, and they did. Yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, Kentucky, I think it might have broken them. They might lose at Tennessee next week. No, that's not, that's not happening. I mean, we'll, that's, we'll that's see. Not, that is just not happening. We it's will see. They, they got to run to Knoxville next week. It is way too like, early on a Sunday morning for you to be talking <laughs> crazy like you, that. You heard it here first, everybody. Uh, Oklahoma nearly gets caught in Lubbock, 51-46. to 46. Uh, The game is 42-40, to 40, Oklahoma. Texas Tech goes for two. Oklahoma returns it for a – Pick a, two. Yeah, pick two, I guess. Pick two. Turns it to a 44-40 to 40 sounds game. Like, sounds like a fast food uh, combo meal. And then at that point, I think the game is pretty much done at that point. Well, now, yeah. they, they came back. Now, the other thing that came out of this, Alan Bowman back in the hospital. He played in the first half, mm -hmm. back in the hospital with complications for his uh, partially collapsed lung. Yeah, I was about to say, that's, so, that's, that's a dangerous situation. Yeah, uh, that's uh, a, prayers and thoughts no, and you, all that after him. Um, football but, is not that important. But, man, like he played the first half. They looked good. Second half, they still looked pretty good. Still looked all right. Um, I don't think the Oklahoma defense improved as much as everybody said they did. They just after, started like, playing worse offenses. Yeah, they played like Kansas State and uh, and yeah. who was the other team? I don't even um, remember. Uh, either way, either way. It, hang on, I'm, I'm, like you keep talking. They they win fifty one to forty six. Kyler Murray does what he has done against every Big Twelve defense thus far, which is run the ball all crazy. And he can throw, like, passes into tight windows and whatnot. Kansas State and TCU, the two go. single worst <laughs> offenses in the Big 12. Congratulations, yeah. your defense got better. We'll call it that. Yeah. We'll call it that. You just play crab offense. But either, I mean, they still gave up 20, a bunch of yards. 27 points, and yeah. Yeah, to TCU. So. TCU, yeah. Hungry. Either way, uh, Oklahoma, they uh, they survive a, uh, a night game in Lubbock, which not a lot of teams do. We'll see if Texas can do it uh, the next go-around. Uh before I get to the Pac-12, let's talk about nine top 25 teams lost, eight of them in the top 20 from the playoff selection committee. LSU, Kentucky, Florida, Penn State, Utah, Iowa, Texas, Texas A&M, Virginia. Well, teams that played each other, one of them have to lose in college obviously, football. You obviously. can't tie. So, like, Kentucky or, or – Kentucky, LSU, uh, Penn State, Texas, uh, and that was it. So – yeah, at that point, like, but the problem is, like, there's so many teams that are just racking up losses here. Who do you rank now? Like, it, it, who does the you, – why you does the on. top 25 have to exist for the playoff committee? I guess for them to say, like, well, this team got has so many wins. top 25 teams. If you, if, listen, if you saw the, the top 25 last week when they did their initial, it's the only reason you could have Clemson at two over Notre Dame is they just backloaded this thing – from 20 to 25 with a bunch of ACC garbage yeah. that didn't belong, but it gave 
Clemson three top 25 wins. When yeah. there are 15 teams not in the top 25, that would be favored, not be favored, kind of heavily favored probably. Over, over NC State, over Syracuse, NC State, Syracuse you know, like maybe, Texas a and I think Syracuse is good. But, but like NC State, they don't belong. I know they only have two losses. That's okay. They still don't belong. I'd put a four-loss team over them right now. Yeah. Like, I know Temple is a four-loss team. I think Temple is a better team than, than NC State right now, hands down, no question about it. Rank their yeah. ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I mean, absolutely. So, uh, so that brings us over to the Pac-12. And I've got two different notes for it. Uh, one, Washington State, or Washington State survives Pac-12 after dark. I don't know if you stayed up for that. I did. I did. I, I did, too. 19-13, to 13, it looked like nobody wanted to win this football game. You had three missed kicks. One of them was an extra point, and that was at the end of the game, which uh, for anybody that had bought the half point at, off the closing line, the closing line was Washington State minus 7.5. I had Washington State minus 10.5, and, and then I had them again at minus 10. Lost both of them. Yeah. Lost both of them. Well, uh, I, I'm going to tell you this. This is, this is one of those games that happens at the end of the season where a team is rolling. And and everybody's now you're getting everybody's best shot. Yeah, like like they're at the top of the heap in in the conference, and so everybody you play says you want to be the best. You got to knock off the best, and so you're getting everyone's best shot. I think I think you're going to run into games like this. And the fact that Washington State survived it, winning, winning them is a big deal. Yeah, it's a very very big deal. Uh, the fumble touchback on the interception was just the most. Pac-12 after dark play Correct. I have ever seen. That's right. Like it, where they intercept the ball, they're running in for a touchdown, he fumbles, and two different guys have a shot at it, and it just rolls out the back of the end zone and Cal gets the ball back and drives down the field and can't score. <laughs> well, what's funny is they threw an interception and they got – they, they when they got the ball back, they get it on the 25. They get better yardage than they had before they, they had threw before, the interception. Yeah. It's just – just insane. Like that's, that's kind of ironic and so, unique and weird about that. So that's note number one from the Pac-12. Note number two, uh, aside from Wazoo, the entire Pac-12 is a dumpster fire. Now, if you look at the Pac-12 South, Utah, USC, Arizona, Arizona State all have three losses. Arizona State only has three conference wins. The other three have four conference wins. There is a legit scenario here where Kevin Sumlin can win the Pac-12 South in his first season after starting off with like blowout losses to Houston and a a loss at home to BYU. Those are non-conference losses, right? Those are non-conference. Okay. But checking. even still, like this because, is just because our boys, our boys from Northwestern still have a chance to to win yeah, and the they're Big 0 and Ten. Three in non-conference. They're zero and three in non-conference with a loss to Akron. It's still number one in the in the Big Ten West. Big Ten West so. Yeah, no, you're right about that. Um, Arizona State beat up on Utah. That was incredibly hey, surprising. I know you. you the fighting Herms, baby. I'm I'm on them, and I'm not getting off this train. I don't. Hey, I don't blame you. He money. You, you line. hit a money line like a two like weeks a in a row yesterday. money line. Um, USC. Golly, like I I, the me. the USC win over Oregon State was eh. Oh, yeah. Oregon State is garbage. But garbage. even still, that game was, was closer yeah. than what the, the oh. score was. The score was 38-21, but, like, no, no, man. No. U- USC is one of those one of those teams I referred to earlier that's just – they're just bad. They're, they're uh, yeah. just a, not a good football team. I know the name on the front of the jersey says we should respect them. No, you shouldn't. No, no you should not. Last note. It was reported, and then it came back. It wasn't uh, Kansas maybe about to fire David Beatty. Maybe. Uh, just a, a quick question, because we're running out of time. What kind of a coach would actually work in Lawrence, Kansas? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, 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 I do know the answer to that. The, the exact same kind of coach that works at the military academies. Just just bring in an an, an offensive triple option guy because you can do that without five-star talent yeah you can yeah, absolutely do that without five-star talent and if your goal and is not you, to win a national championship oh God, all that no, kind of stuff no. then then yeah dude you, just need you to would do that. you would upset a lot of the big 12 because those teams have no idea how to stop that they can't stop anybody 
much less yeah. a team that controls the football army, Georgia Tech, that just we're just going to hold it for 48 minutes of this 60-minute game. And that great offense that you've got, y'all just stay on the sidelines and hang tight. Would, uh, would you offer it to Paul Johnson? Get him out of Georgia Tech? Well, I don't know that he's going to leave Georgia Tech. Well, it, it, now, Georgia Tech, I mean, there's been talk about like them getting rid of him. Are because they, he, he's, Do they think they can do better than him? Because I, I see them as the Vanderbilt of the ACC. That's kind of what I – Like, your academics are too high to get really good ACC talent. Well, I guess to say that Duke does it. Well, Duke, I don't know, man. Duke Duke's, plays a, a different kind of thing. Duke's too. a private school. So, we, we like to think of them as a smart kid school – but they let they let guys get paid. I mean, we know their basketball program's willing to fudge some stuff. So now you're right about that. All right, that is our college football week ten recap. Don't forget check out tunicatravel.com and winningcureseverything.com.